Hello everybody, my name is Dr. Victor Newman and today I will be going over the NAC OSCE station which is relevant to sexual assault, uh, a victim of sexual assault, that will be your patient. So as we know that the NAC OSCE stations can be separated between history, physical exam or a combination of the two. Certainly, you will not be asked to do a physical examination of a sexual assault victim. This will be a eight-minute history-taking station, and you do need those eight minutes because there's quite a few points that we need to make sure we touch on and go over. <clears throat> to begin, let's define sexual assault, okay? So, any sexual act performed by one person on another without consent and this may result from the use of force, the threat of force, or from the victim's inability or refusal to give consent. It's important to keep in mind that sexual assault and domestic violence often go hand in hand. So in your history, in your assessment, make sure you screen for domestic violence and the safety of your patient, where they are, and what kind of support they might need. Let's quickly overview the five main assessment categories. Assessment and treatment of physical injuries. So of course, you won't be doing the physical examination, but you will assess the physical injuries in the history. The second is the psychological assessment and support. And this one is profoundly important because they will almost always, this, this type of trauma will always essentially be tied with psychological trauma and the need for support, counseling, and assistance. Always we need to keep in mind pregnancy assessment and prevention. And then we need to also evaluate, treat, and prevent any sexually trans transmitted infections. So we'll be screening for that in the history as well. The final category, very important as well, as this is somewhat unique, is the forensic evaluation. We gotta keep in mind this is a legal matter and there may be prosecution. You may be subpoenaed, you may need to testify others involved. For example, if the patient comes with a family member, they need to know that they may be subpoenaed, they may be part of the legal proceedings. So if anybody is accompanying the patient who suffered the sexual assault, it's important to let them know to stay silent and passive for the, for the assessment and the examination and let them know that they may be asked to contribute in the legal proceedings. Okay, so for the history, and this will definitely be a major piece, make sure you approach with great sensitivity this is something that needs a lot of compassion and a very supportive manner. So the manner in which you come forward needs to have an air of kind of caution, sensitivity, and being aware of how difficult this may be for the patient. <clears throat> On the other hand, it's also important to emphasize that as precise details as possible are needed for the best result, both with the physical trauma assessment and with the forensic portion. We need to know in a very detailed manner what happened and why and how. <clears throat> okay. So, as we dive into the history, this is what we need to obtain. First of all, the circumstances of assault, including the date, time, location, use of weapons, use of force, if there were any restraints used or threats made, okay? All of those need to be touched on. We need to know whether or not the victim experienced a loss of consciousness or any memory loss during the episode. We need to know the assailant's physical description, you know, and also whether they were using drugs or alcohol because these details can be important in the forensic component. Then we need to touch on the specifics of reg regarding 
oral, vaginal, or anorectal contact or penetration, along with things like, was there the presence or absence of ejaculation, any idea if a condom was used, these details are important. <coughs> a very important aspect of the history and also physical exam is whether there's bleeding on either part, the assailant or the victim, because of course we're looking for signs or risk factors for hepatitis or HIV transmission. And also we'll have to ascertain the source of the bleeding if it's not if it's not certain. Following that we need to touch on the recent consensual sexual activity of your patient either before or after and include details about site of contact again oral genital or anal rectal and and condom use. <coughs> we need to know again the risks of the pregnancy whether things are interfering with that if other individuals have been engaging in sexual activity um, in a consensual way since the incident and we want to know for example for forensic purposes have they wiped showered bathed changed clothing eaten used toothpaste or mouthwash enemas have they changed or removed a tampon sanitary pad or barrier contraceptive since the assault because these activities can lower the yield of the forensic specimen collection. Okay, we've gone over time a little bit here, so I'll leave it there for you. Uh, but these are the most important components that you need to touch on in a sexual assault OSCE case. Thank you.